Shalom Kavarim. Peace to our circle of friends around the world. Merry Christmas. Three weeks ago, we talked about when Christ was born. And then we talked about where Christ was born. Last week, we talked about how Christ was born. This week, I want to talk about why Christ was born. I want to give you several reasons to think about. Number one, it was to keep God's promise of a coming Redeemer. The first hint of the coming of the Redeemer is Genesis chapter 3, verse number 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. One of the deepest studies you can ever get into is the seed of the woman fighting against the seed of the serpent. And all through the Old Testament, the seed of the serpent did everything he could to keep the seed of the woman from coming into the world. But Jesus would be the seed that would come into the world, and he would bruise the head of the serpent. Number two, Jesus came into the world to fulfill the covenant that God made with Abraham. Wow, I love to study about the Abrahamic covenant. In Genesis twenty-two eighteen, God told Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Now, how in the world is God going to bless the nations through the seed of Abraham? It would be through the singular seed, Christ himself. Galatians chapter th- uh, 3, verse number 16, But as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. And he says in Genesis 3 that he made a promise to Abraham, and that promise would be fulfilled even to us Gentiles through the seed of Christ. So he fulfilled the Abrahamic covenant that is still going on today. Every time someone receives Christ into their heart. That covenant is alive again. Jesus was of the seed of Abraham. He was a Jew in the flesh. And he fulfilled that unconditional covenant he made with Abraham. Number three, Jesus came into the world and was born into this world to fulfill the covenant that God made with David. In Matthew chapter 1, verse number 1 says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Remember in 2 Samuel chapter 7, God promised David that the kingdom would never depart from his family. So Jesus had to come through the house of David and through the Abrahamic covenant. So Jesus was born to fulfill the Abrahamic covenant and the Davidic covenant. You can do a rich study on the covenants in the Bible. Luke chapter 1, verse 32 says, He shall be great, this is Gabriel talking to Mary, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Hallelujah. Talking about the Messianic kingdom. When Christ comes a second time, he will sit on the throne of his father David in Jerusalem. What a day that's going to be, the thousand-year reign of Christ. We know that must happen. All the prophecies were fulfilled concerning the first coming of the Messiah, and there's even more prophecies concerning his second coming, and how much more do we look forward to those second coming prophecies. Another reason Jesus was born was because of sin. Even his name would mean that he would be our Savior. Listen to Numbers 13, 16. Someone asked me one time where the name Jesus really originated. Really, his Hebrew name was Yahshua, and I want to show you. In Numbers 13, 16, these are the names of the men which Moses sent out to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun, Yahashua. And that's the first time. The name of the Savior is mentioned, Yahashua. So really, Joshua in the Old Testament 
was the name of Jesus in the New Testament. His Hebrew name means salvation. In Matthew one twenty one, she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, or Yeshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. Really, the transliterated name Jesus has no definitive meaning, but his Hebrew name Yahashua or Yeshua means salvation. Yahweh saves. He came to be our Savior, to save us from our sins. In Luke chapter 1, verse 46 and 47, it says, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Even Mary had to have a Savior. That implies that we all have to be saved. And that's why Jesus was born. He was because because we're sinners, we have to be saved from our sins. Luke uh, Luke chapter 2, verse number 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That's one of my favorite verses concerning the birth of Jesus. Can I read it again to you? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That implies that we're lost, and Jesus is our Savior if we receive him. And he's not just the Messiah. He's not just the Christ. He is the Lord. In John chapter 3, in verse number 3, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So being saved or being born again is not an option if we want to be in God's kingdom. Anytime Jesus says, Verily, verily, you need to pay close attention. In Hebrew, it's Amen, Amen. He's the only one could begin a statement by saying that twice. Verily, verily, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So being saved is not an option. We have to be saved to get to heaven. And this is the real meaning behind the Christmas story, why Christ came into the world. Listen to Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Wow. Jesus had to come into the world for us to have a chance to be saved. Can you imagine living in a world without the hope of Christ? What if Christ had not come into the world? We would have no hope for salvation But glory to God, he did come, and we can be saved. We don't have to be lost. We can be in the family of God because Jesus was born. In John 3, verse 16 and 17, probably the most familiar verses in the Bible, but may they find an echo in your heart today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You know, it may sound simple to you, but Christ didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. The love of God motivated him to create everything, and even when man went into sin, It was the love of God that sent Christ into the world. And God is so big in this universe. He's bigger than our mind could ever conceive that he's just asking us to believe. Isn't that a loving God? If you just believe and trust in what Christ has done, you don't have to perish. You'll have everlasting life. In other words, the very life of God will be given to us, and his life is eternal. Another reason that Christ came into the world was to reveal his holiness. In Luke chapter 2, verse number 9, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. When Christ was born in Bethlehem, 
the angel of the Lord came from heaven to those lowly shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. The holy Christ was born, and he was accompanied by a choir of angels from heaven, and the glory of God was everywhere. You know, in one of the Apocrypha books, and uh, I know it's not the Holy Bible, but one of the uh, Apocrypha books says when Jesus was born in the cave in Bethlehem, that the glory of God shined down through the cave. But I don't have any problem believing that because the glory of God was in Christ. And he came to reveal to us the holiness of God. In Matthew chapter 2, verse number 2, When the wise men came, listen to this. They said, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Listen to that verse of scripture. Even the Gentile wise men from the east called him the king, capital K. He was the king of the Jews. He had his own star in the heavens, and they saw his glory. We believe it was the Shekinah glory of God they saw because it moved and guided them where they needed to go. And it says they came to worship him. Why? Because of his holiness, because of who Jesus was. Jesus was the word of God in the flesh. Jesus was the creator of everything, and he had come to his people not just to give them a word, but to come himself in the form of a man. Hallelujah. Praise God. Matthew chapter 2, verse number 11, about the wise men, says, When they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. You can do a great study on that verse. Uh, We do not know for sure. We can't be dogmatic about it. But we believe that they may have purchased the frankincense, gold, and myrrh in a place called Petra. In those days, it was known for those items and spices and gold and myrrh. And listen, and they represented his deity, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Wow. Wow. And these wise men worshipped him, telling us about who he was. He was the king of glory. In Matthew chapter 4, verse number 1, when Jesus began his ministry, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Listen, Jesus had to defeat Satan as a man. And that shows us his holiness. Jesus was tempted like you and I, but he never sinned. So he came to reveal his holiness. In Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Now think with me. Christ came to fulfill the law. Do you know how many laws are written in the Old Testament? In the law of Moses, 613. The Bible says there's no one could be justified by trying to keep the law. So God came in the world and fulfilled his own law through his son Jesus. Jesus kept the law perfectly. What a thought. Look in John 8, 46. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? In other words, you cannot find me guilty of any sin. There was no sin in Jesus. Even Pontius Pilate, who was a pagan, he says, I find no fault in this man. So Jesus was born into this world to reveal the holiness of God. Another reason that Jesus was born was to take away our sins. Take away our sins. In John 1, 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Notice the word is not plural there. Sin of the world. Jesus came 
to take away our sin. Sin will not be on our account anymore if we receive him. We will be declared righteous. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree. When you think about Christ coming into the world, he came to bear our sins. Think about when he died on the cross. Everything in my life that cannot go to heaven was on the body of the Lord Jesus. The sins of the flesh and the sins of the Spirit. Sometimes we forget the sins of the Spirit. Pride, jealousy, selfishness, worldliness. All those things can't go to heaven, but they were laid on the body of Jesus. The Bible says that in 1 John 3, 5, He came to take away our sins. Hallelujah. Jesus came into the world also to take away our fear of death. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 9 said, He tasted death for every man, every man. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 said, He took on flesh and blood to take away our fear of death that Satan had brought into the world. Christ came into this world to take away our sins and to take away our fear of dying. You know, one of the great things I can tell you that Christ has done for me over the years, among all the things He's done for me, I'm not afraid to die. And growing up as a little boy, I was always afraid of death, but not anymore. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to the day. You know why? Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's why Christ came into the world. Christ was born to be our mediator between God and men. It was going to take more than just his birth, more than just a sinless life. It was going to take his death on the cross at Calvary. 1 Timothy 2, 5, And you know that he was manifested to take away away our sins, and in him is no sin. There's only one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus. We have hundreds of thousands of different churches and denominations in the world, and God has children in many of those denominations, and most of them. But there's only one way to heaven, and that's through Christ. He's the mediator between God and men. Christ was born and came into this world to give us the blessed Holy Spirit. In the Hebrew tongue, the language of Jesus, the blessed Ruach HaKodesh, the holy wind of God. Did you know the word for wind and spirit is the same word in Hebrew? Ruach. Listen, 2 Corinthians 6.16 says, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And that's quoting from Jeremiah 31. The new covenant was brought in. Christ came into this world to bring in that new covenant. And through his death, burial, and resurrection, the Holy Spirit has come into the world and lives not in buildings, but he lives inside of his people. Can you say hallelujah? The word for church in Hebrew is kahal, and it means the people, the called out people. The church is not some building on the corner. The church is the people. The Holy, Holy Spirit lives inside of us. That'll change the way you live. If you're having trouble with sin in your life, think about it. The Holy Spirit lives in your body if you are born again. Jesus came into this world to give us the assurance that heaven is real. Listen in John 14, 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. That was my earthly father's favorite passage of Scripture. In my Father's house are many mansions. Aren't you thankful heaven's a real place? Christ came into this world to give us the assurance that we can go there one day if we will embrace him. 
One of the most underrated chapters in the Bible is the 17th chapter of John, where Jesus is praying to the Father. Think about that, the high priestly prayer. And in that prayer, he said these words, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. That's about as rich as it gets, folks. Jesus came into the world, and he prayed into the, into the high priestly prayer to the Heavenly Father. Jesus is praying that we will be where he is, we will be with him, and we will behold his glory. Really, our assurance and our eternal security is based on the Father answering his Son's prayer and the finished work of Calvary. That's how sure we are of heaven. If you know Christ today and you're born again, you need to rejoice this Christmas season because Christ came so you can be rest assured that one day you'll leave this planet and you'll go to heaven when you die. If you don't have that assurance today, would you invite Christ to come in? I can't think of a better time of the year to invite Jesus to come in than this Christmas season. I want to have prayer with you today. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We're so thankful that Christ did come into the world. And I pray you'll give many people listening today the assurance that heaven is their home. I pray if any be lost, that your spirit will draw them today and they will truly be born again. We love them and we pray your kingdom will be enlarged as a result of this little message. In the lovely name of Yeshua, Jesus the Lord. Amen. Real joy of Christmas is to know that Jesus came and to know I have eternal life. I have to praise his name. The real joy of Christmas is to be with family so dear and to show them love see the children smile fills my heart with Christmas cheer the world can't take away the real joy inside when I think about how blessed I am there's just no way to hide the real joy of Christmas is much more than happiness And the reason why Jesus came was to give us righteousness So it's not just wishful thinking When you know that something is true And my Christmas prayer to people everywhere This real joy will come to you this world can't take away the real joy inside. When I think about how blessed I am, there's just no way to hide. So it's not just wishful thinking when you know that something is true. My Christmas prayer to people everywhere, this real joy will come to you. And my Christmas prayer to people everywhere This real joy will come to you